You said you wanted a PC that's simpler and easier to use. We listened. Welcome to Windows 7. Ah, Windows 7. The successor to the widely and unfairly panned Windows Vista. A brand new start for Microsoft. The real successor to XP. And completely not like Vista. It was exactly like Vista. And well, it was the next big hit that Microsoft was looking for. More than half a billion copies sold worldwide, almost 50% market share at its peak, raving reviews, it was a success alright. And Microsoft really needed to win after Vista, which we already did cover if you want to check out the full video. But anyways, I got the good old Windows XP PC out, which I forgot I installed Tiny11 on it, downloaded Windows 7 from archive.org, made a bootable USB using the bootable USB creator, plugged it in, and... I don't know what the hell that means. I figured perhaps it was because Tiny11 was using UEFI, but Windows 7 also supports UEFI. Anyways, after changing a few BIOS settings, same problem. I could not boot into the USB, and after a few reboots, the computer wouldn't boot altogether. I don't know what the hell's going on. If I left it alone for a few hours, it would boot up again. But it has gotten to the point where if I hit the power button, I have no idea if it'll post. So I said, f*** it, I'll just use a different computer. So I pulled out this Mac Mini I had lying around, booted it up, set up boot camp, downloaded drivers, partitioned the drive, and it's asking me for a Windows 7 DVD. Two problems. The only DVD burner I had access to was this Windows XP PC, which I used to use Windows 7 to burn DVDs, but I can't anymore because that PC's out of commission. But it doesn't even matter if I had a DVD, because the Mac Mini Super Drive is dead, and it refuses to boot from the USB. Must be something to do with the BIOS. So at this point I was like, we need a whole new start. So I set out to find an age-appropriate PC, got back with this 2012 Mac Mini, which had Ubuntu on it, but no worries, it totally boots from the USB, and yeah, at least now we're in the setup. So I go through the entire setup, it reboots a few times, and within a few minutes, we're at the desktop. But we're not done yet, because we still got ways to go. So Windows 7 was supposed to be released, wait for it, 2002. Yeah, a year after XP. Not 2009 like it did. Back in 2000, the roadmap was created for the next versions of Windows. Whistler, Longhorn, and Blackcomb. Whistler and Blackcomb were supposed to be major releases, with Longhorn being kind of a bridge between them. Whistler, of course, was Windows XP. Longhorn was supposed to be Windows Vista, and Blackcomb eventually became Windows 7. But as you know, Longhorn's development was a giant mess. It was even completely restarted in 2004, blah blah blah. So what ended up happening was, Vista really became the next big overall, with a major overhaul to the UI, the kernel, everything. And after Vista flopped, Windows 7 became the stepping stone rather than it being the major overhaul. And this is also why under the hood, Windows 7 is nearly identical to Vista. Forget under the hood, even looking at it from the outset, it looks pretty much like Vista. But anyways. So we've gotten Windows 7 on a computer, finally. But as you can see, it's all potato quality, because we still need drivers. Unfortunately, since this Mac Mini did not come with Mac OS, I could not use Bootcamp to find the drivers, and I don't even know what maker model this Mac Mini is. So I looked up the serial number, typed it into Apple's warranty covered service, and boom, it's a late 2012 Mac Mini. So a quick Google search for Bootcamp drivers, and there we go. So I copied them on a flash drive, plugged it in, and started installing drivers, which took a while, and one restart later, we're at the desktop at full resolution, with Windows arrow and everything. And this Mac Mini has Wi-Fi, so I connected to my router, and now we have internet. Although Internet Explorer doesn't really work, it works enough to download Chrome, which isn't the latest version, but still available on the official website. And through Chrome, everything works perfectly fine, like playing YouTube videos at full HD. Okay, so we've restored basic functionality like Wi-Fi, Internet, and all of that, but it's probably best that I update it with the latest security patches, which Windows update is broken. No surprise there, since Windows 7 officially ended support in January 2020. But fret not, we have LegacyUpdate.net, which will basically fully update your old Windows operating systems. So I downloaded and installed Legacy Update, and after it reboots, you can go into the Windows Update app, like usual, and install all the latest security patches, which there were a ton of. And after hours, we finally fully updated this Windows 7 installation. Vista is hated, and Windows 7 is loved, but then I say they're very similar. So what makes one great, and one not so great? Well, there's a lot to unpack. Windows 7 is more stable than Vista. It is more reliable than Vista. But the core mistake people make is comparing end of life Vista with Windows 7. Vista was pretty much great. One service pack, one rolled around. But the truth is that Vista at launch was just not ready. 
given the tumultuous development and the complete restart halfway through, it had a lot of problems that Microsoft fixed and fixed, and ultimately rebranded all the fixes in a new bundle, called it Windows 7, because Vista was a PR nightmare, and the world was none the wiser. I'm serious. While researching this video and having just done the Vista video, I could not find any major new features that were unique to Windows 7. Index search, Windows arrow, gadgets, user account control, all came in Vista. I mean, there's minor improvements, like the taskbar shows icons instead of showing the whole tab name to make it easier to multitask. The boot times are slightly faster, there's improved performance on multi-core processors, but even the underlying Windows NT version jumps from 6.0 to 6.1, while XP to Vista was a major revision, jumping from 5.2 to 6.0, hence the compatibility issues. I don't know, I'm rambling here. I like Windows 7, but I also really like Vista, no matter how much people hate it. Okay, so now that we have all the drivers, let me go through the specs of this Mac Mini. It has an Intel Core i5-3210M with 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM and Intel HD 4000 graphics with about 1.7 gigs of shared memory. This actually turned out to be quite the upgrade compared to the PC we used for Windows XP and Vista, since that had an Intel Core i3 of the same generation. So anyways, time to get the old hard drive out with all my childhood games on it, and first up is Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012, which would not boot because there were a bunch of DLLs missing, but once I downloaded them all, we're good. You know, I thought this game was such a bummer when it first came out, but over the years I've come to realize that I've spent an ungodly amount of time in this game world. It's a beautiful looking game. The car selection is amazing, especially with all the DLC. It's just great arcade fun. And yeah, the music's pretty good too. Next up is GTA 4, which I already installed on this hard drive, and well... Okay, so apparently you need some Visual C++ package, which after installing, we're in. Or so I thought. I forgot I modded this game to have real life cars, and I don't know what else, and it seems to have definitely broken something, because the whole game looks like this. I've been playing off this hard disk so far, but I forgot that Windows 7 is still new enough to possibly support Steam. Worth a shot. And yeah, Steam totally works. For now. It says it's gonna end support in 200 days or something, but anyways, I queued a few game downloads, and first up is Tomb Raider. Let me tell you something, these men know exactly what they're doing with that Lara Croft design like. But anyways, looks decent, plays decent, but it's awfully dark. And finally, we have Batman Arkham City. Not gonna lie, this is one of my all-time favorite games. Just the way it starts is... It still looks amazing, the music is on point, and the voice acting is top-notch as always. All these games run at 720p at medium to low settings. I mean, it's a 2012 Mac Mini with integrated graphics. I'm just surprised these games run at all. But these settings are apt, given that we're in the PS3, Xbox 360 era, and this seems to be about console quality. Okay, despite my love for Windows Vista, I've gotta admit that Windows 7 is the better operating system. It's a definite improvement over Vista, in terms of looks, usability, driver support, stability, and it makes sense. Unlike Vista, Windows 7 had the time to be fully developed, if you think about it, it actually inherited a lot of the problems that Vista had, like a bajillion additions, the 64-bit kernel, the backwards compatibility issues, but by then, people were a lot more forgiving. But like a lot of people, I too have a lot of fond memories with Windows 7. I mean, this is probably the operating system you use to watch your first YouTuber, or make your first Facebook account, and even today, Windows 7 is the third most popular Windows. That being said, I would not recommend using Windows 7 today, and certainly don't put any important login credentials on an OS you downloaded off the internet. You never know. But Windows 7 is now officially dead dead. Like even the extended support, where you as a business could pay Microsoft for a few more years of support, officially ended in January 2023. So farewell Windows 7, you had a good run.